Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Uh, we are coming at you on February 10th of 2021, so this is just a few, about three weeks or so into the Biden administration. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, with a lot of talk of uh, unity in the midst of impeachment. But uh, before we get to any of that, let me introduce our panel to you. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. This uh, is messing with me being in the opposite corners now. <laughs> I'm all messed up. <laughs> You'll have to use the left side of your brain. <laughs> <I know. laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, he is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Breathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Um, so let's jump right into the topic. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, focus of our show this time is going to be on impeachment. And so, uh, obviously, this is something where everybody's talking unity. At the same time, they're all saying the other side's trying to kill us, and we need to impeach a guy who's already out of office. <laughs> so it's uh, it's getting a little bit uh, crazy out there. But they've just started the uh, the actual hearings this week, I believe, on it in the Senate. So yesterday, yeah. yeah. Yesterday. And so it's it's kind of crazy. It's not even your normal, I guess, if you there is such a thing as a normal impeachment hearing, but a normal impeachment hearing, you'd actually have the Supreme Court justice uh, sitting in and overseeing it. But um, apparently the Supreme Court didn't want to have anything to do with this one either. <laughs> so it's actually one of the Democrats is, is uh, sitting in filling that role. So you can see it's definitely a fair and balanced process right from the beginning when the uh, people who are trying to get you thrown out are also sitting as judge over the process as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, do you guys uh, have any thoughts on this whole impeachment madness that we're embroiled in? Well, first of all, Leon's going to have to use the right side of his brain because of this mix up here. And uh, that that's the artistic side of, his, of the brain. So I expect some very, very clever remarks coming from uh, the last word in Liberty. Um, <laughs> but Bruce Springsteen, speaking of the right side of your brain, the Bruce Springsteen thinks that the Democrats are the party of unity and the Republicans are the party of divisiveness, uh, or is it divisiveness? And, um, so, uh, with that, with that said, uh, uh, no wonder that they all think that, uh, now it's all puppy dogs and kitty cats and uh one well, tim just to jump in to let, uh, what to let uh, or to let our viewers know what yeah, you're talking about uh in the oh. recent super bowl there was an advertisement where uh, it's about a 30 second or so piece where bruce springsteen pretends to be a farmer i guess and, <laughs> and he tries to make it like he lives in the middle of the country and it, it's all about unity you know when you know, clearly he's been a, a major advocate for the Democrat Party for ever, ever since. Forever, yeah, we need to meet yeah. in the middle, meet in the middle. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, I don't know, this is such a, such a waste of time, per, in my opinion, uh, whether or not it's constitutional, I'm not going to get into that. But uh, I, uh, I just think it's, it's just, um, it's, it's just trying to uh, get back as much as they can. Uh, you know, to beat a dead horse, to uh, kick them when they're down. And it, that's all it is. It's, it's schoolyard antics by by people that never got out of grade school in mentally. You know, these these uh, these partisan uh, tribal tribalist um, politicians that, uh, you know, anybody in your side is evil and anybody in my side is is pure as the wind driven snow, as I like to say. And, uh, it's just, uh, it's just theater for, um, for their constituents to keep them in power as long as they can. Cause everybody in on their side, the Democrat side hates Trump or they think they do. And, uh, you know, everybody else on the other side is a bunch of evil doers. And if they would just wake up and become 
get, get, get with the program. We know what's best for the country. And by golly, we're going to, we're going to shove it down your throat, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, well, I, I believe that this whole process is, is unconstitutional. Okay. I know yesterday the, the Senate voted to, to proceed with it because they, they thought it was still constitutional to do so. But I believe this process is unconstitutional. It is unconstitutional because the Constitution clearly says, and I, I think we're supposed to be living by that document, it clearly says removal and disqualification. It doesn't say removal or disqualification. It says removal and disqualification. I do not know how we will remove a president from office when he's already removed because they claim he lost the election and he is thus out of office. So I believe it's unconstitutional. Besides that, it's, imp it's, it's, it's virtually impossible that they will convict Trump. The, the Democrats need 17 Republicans to join them. At most, they're going to get is five, maybe six. You because know, I believe uh, they need 67 total votes, right, in the Senate. 67 total, and, yes. And clearly, yes. they don't have 67 Democrats in the Senate. They, they don't. They, there's, no way, there's no way they're going to get they're going to get 17 Republicans to join them. They may get four, somewhere between four and six. It depends on how the, the trial trial go on. So it's, to me, it's unconstitutional. And to me, it's a waste of time of what they are trying to do. However, I do believe I understand. Well, I, not I do believe. I understand why the House impeached Trump and impeached him for a second time. The first, the first one was ridiculous, but this one may have had some substance. I do not believe that a president... I'm speaking figuratively, should be anywhere within a hundred miles of anything like what happened on, on the Capitol. Now, I do not believe Trump incited these people, mm. but he's aware of a fringe element within his, within his, um, within his supporters that get all riled up and uh, they, they have done this before in terms of little, little riots and little things that happened during the campaign and that kind of stuff and things like that. And there were some very loose statements made at, at that rally on, on, on January 6th. So I understand why the House impeached him, even though I believe the process is a, is a, has a stench of hypocrisy in it because they did not give Trump any opportunity to defend himself. They, they, there were no hearings. They didn't do anything like that. But the Constitution, which I'm willing to live by, gives the House of Representatives the sole, the sole power of impeachment and how they want to run their process, that's up to them. I may disagree with it, and I do disagree with it, but the 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 outcome, the impeachment, the, the fact that they, they, they voted to impeach him, I, I, I can see there's a there is a, an argument for that. And I I I I don't, I don't have any good arguments against the impeachment itself, but the process stinks. Mm. So, so mm. But but overall, though, I think this is a waste of time. It really is. I don't I don't know what what they are, what they are trying to what they are trying to do. I mean, they cannot inflict any more damage on Trump. He's already out of office. The 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 hatred of him is just showing, as far as I can see. So I don't know what it is they are trying to achieve by going through this this farce. And that's what it says. It's a farce. What what about the claim that what happened January sixth was insurrection? What do you think about that, Leon? Was that insurrection? Did, uh, uh, that that you, as what you know, insurrection has been in the past in different countries and and uh, so on. Well, the 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 well, no, it's I don't think it's an insurrection to start with. Okay, but okay. the the day uh, January six on CNN, I was happened. Well, uh, I I had a friend here in my home uh, on that day, and he was watching CNN when this thing started. And within 10 minutes of those people entering the Capitol, CNN used the word insurrection. And since then, well, nobody, oh, talking about fact checking, nobody went back and said, well, oh, well, was that really an insurrection? Okay. But it was not. Okay. It was just a bunch of damn fools went into the Capitol, they rioted, unfortunately people died and people got injured. But that was not an insurrection as we know insurrection to be. But the left 
is very good, is very good at taking words out of common usage that we know in common usage and use it in their own within their own their own narratives to convince us that they are such good people. They could see good and they can see evil, but they'll always use words that we know in common uses. One of them uh, does really irritate me is for them to use reproductive rights. Oh God, it does irritate me when I hear them use that word because you know what they're talking about, okay? So no, this was not an insurrection. It was not, but it was just uh, some idiots went into the went into the in, into the in, in the capital. They rioted. They did some very awful things. I hope they are prosecuted, as it seems like they, they will be, and I hope some of them end up in prison, and that's fine. But I do not want the hypocrisy to go by without notice. During the summer, during the summer, our cities were being burned by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Nobody was, our federal building was attacked as a matter of fact, and they were trying to set it on fire with people inside of it. What, what, and nobody called any of that insurrection, nobody called any of that, anything like that. As what, a matter what, of fact, we were hearing that it was a mostly peaceful protest. That's what we heard all summer long. Well, Leon, more to the point, uh, there was actually a violent protest out in front of the White House as well. So, I mean, right. you know, it's it's very odd that, you know, how the mainstream media can, you know, immediately call what happened uh, insurrection uh, with these, you know, protesters at the Capitol. But somehow when these protesters are literally throwing things at the police lines defending the, the White House, you know, right. <laughs> during this while they're trying to tear down statues in front of it and everything else. In fact, they were even attacking reporters and other people as they, not 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 lefty reporters, but, you know, <laughs> anybody, anybody else, you know, who wasn't, uh, uh, you know, properly affiliated. They didn't have their, their uh, mainstream media gang tats on. <laughs> 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 but, but maybe they have a special sign. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <There's a sign laughs> yeah. 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 But there was a, there was at least uh, one Fox reporter who was attacked out in front of the White House. Uh, you know, while you had the police lines that were trying to, uh, and, and they were, uh, you know, keep these protesters at bay, and they were throwing, I think, you know, uh, bottles of frozen water and other things like that at the police. So they, you know, this was not at all. I mean, I think there were several police who were injured in that, and you know, not a, not a word. It was a mostly peaceful protest from. <laughs> <laughs> so you can kind of see how this works. Yeah, we could, well, we, could, we could talk all all night about all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just have a word. I, my description of the January sixth uh, Capitol thing is a photo op for Facebook posting. <laughs> a fair amount of that happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially for a guy with horns on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, especially. You know, there, there is a consequence, though, to this uh, impeachment that I don't think I, I really haven't heard much of in the media. And it's, you know, I, I personally don't care, you know, to see Trump run again. I'm, I'm kind of hoping he won't. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I voted, uh, you know, uh, libertarian the last few elections. So this, he's not, he's not really my guy. Um, although I think this this whole impeachment thing is a complete farce. But the, the thing that actually concerns me isn't so much, you know, that his inability to run for office again. It's it's actually that one of the consequences of being impeached is that you lose Secret Service protection. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, that actually does have some consequences I'm a little bit concerned about, because if he were impeached and i you know it's not very unlikely to happen because you mean convicted he's already he's already yeah. impeached you mean convicted but yeah he has ahead. to be convicted yeah yeah yes. so uh, but but if he were convicted then he actually loses secret service protection and that actually has some real implications if somehow that were not restored because uh you know he could very easily be assassinated if he did not have secret service protection i mean this has happened to presidents who do have secret service protection and certainly yes. we know trump is a lightning rod and, you know, that could be an extraordinarily divisive thing in this country if he lost his Secret Service protection and then were assassinated. And not just uh, the issue of he were assassinated by some lefty nut, but suppose yeah. it was, you know, somebody from a terrorist organization, you know, in the Middle East or something. I mean, you know, certainly there are people who would be very upset uh, with Trump from his actions over in, in the Middle East. And I mean, the idea that that could potentially happen if, if 
you know, because certainly Trump is is very likely not going to be able to afford the same type of protection that he would get with Secret Service protection, even though he does have some of his own resources. Yes, uh, sure, sure. Uh, you know, honestly, honestly, Jason, that, that's a good point because I, I never really even thought about it, to be honest, because, you know, I, I, I'm sure even if Trump loses his, his uh, Secret Service protection, which I don't think is, is going to happen given what's going on in the Senate right now, but it, 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 does, it does raise some really interesting issues, which obviously I didn't even think about. Because this, I mean, if you, if you really believe what, 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 that, that, that this is a possibility, and even if to say, God forbid, it did happen, where he lost his Secret Service protection, he, he, he will probably have his own protection, which is probably not going to be as good and, as a, and, a, and as extensive as his Secret Service. And let us say somebody did penetrate the service and did end up killing him, God forbid. This could cause a war. Yeah, exactly. All right. It could I mean, drag this, us this, into this, a, this, an international this. war if it were uh, uh, an international actor who killed him. Yes. Uh, maybe maybe that's the false flag because Biden has never not voted for a war. He's just a big <laughs> war. You know, I mean, if, yeah. if, if, if I were to go out on a limb here and say that he still has some mental faculties left, and they haven't all been eaten up by dementia, uh, then those faculties are going to be warmonger fac faculties, okay? And what better false flag event can you think of as a Democrat than to have some uh, foreign government or foreign entity or terrorist organization knock off Donald Trump? I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like made in heaven for a Democrat. OK, you get your false flag. You get to go to war over over. You know, you get to defend the honor of the, the poor dead Trump. And at the same time, uh, it, yeah, you get to to um, put money in the pockets of all your uh, war um, uh, uh, entities, your your uh, the, the war party or whatever you want to call it, you know, um, uh, all the companies like Lockheed and, you know, all the all the normal people, okay, and normal companies that make and money I, off I should war. Say too, not just the left, but neocons, too, might neocons. fall into the camp. Uh, sure, well. sure, you get, yeah, to, sure. You get sure. to get, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you get to get on the side of every evil entity left and right in the United States, and still you get to knock Trump off. Man, I can't think of a better thing if I was a Democrat right now, especially a politician. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of sort of military costs that you know, we sort of slipped into with this, uh, you know, another issue is that, you know, the, this whole thing has turned the Capitol into uh, Washington, D.C., into a police state. And they literally yes. have are spending like five hundred million dollars. It's been reported to police the, the, the Capitol with with armed soldiers in the streets. Yeah. Uh, that's half, this that's half a billion dollars. Half yes. a billion dollars. Yep. And during a time when we should be looking to cut every unnecessary expense. I mean, really, I mean, we we yeah. sat there and we've, we've killed production uh, out, out there with this pandemic, terrible government led pandemic policy of lockdowns. And then to, to boot, we're, we're making it harder for people to become productive and get back into the workforce. And then they want to spend more money. They want to take us farther into debt while they're not letting us be productive. You know, <laughs> so just, just print it up. What's the diff? Yeah. What's the deal? Just yeah. yeah. What's the big deal, uh, Jason? You just print it up. Who cares, <laughs> right? Modern monetary <laughs> theory. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you see, this this is the thing. They destroy they, they destroy the economy. Okay, they destroy the livelihood, the lives and the livelihoods of of millions of Americans. And then they're going to fix it for us. They're going to come in on their white horse and save us all. Okay? They're going to print up the money, just like Tim is saying. They're going to give us these stimulus checks, these little nice little stimulus checks. And we should all be grateful. And we should all bow down to massa. That is what they want. That we be their slaves and it. servants. Yeah. Well, speaking of government just edict, giving edicts to people on what they can make and what they have to pay for things uh one of the crazy pandemic policies going on in some big cities now is that the the government has heroically and generously decided to uh 
pay frontline workers uh, money from somebody else's pocket. <laughs> in this case, it happens to be the grocery stores in in Los Angeles. Uh, there's this Heroes uh, Local Heroes Act, I think that went into to play. And what they're doing there is they're forcing these local uh, businesses to pay an extra four dollar premium to certain workers. And I know that includes grocery workers there because they've already wound up having the problem of two Kroger's or Ralph's going out of business down there or closing shop. Um, so sadly, the heroes didn't quite get that compensation that they were promised by so heroically by the government officials there. And something similar has happened in Seattle and likely some other cities as well, too. And in Seattle, uh, the, the grocery stores have immediately uh, fire, filed a, a lawsuit against the city to stop this. Uh, but, you know, just, a, a, you know, $4 off the top. It's no, you know, there, there's, there's no, your private business, you don't decide anymore what you're going to pay somebody or what you're going to negotiate with your uh, staff, you literally are ordered by the government how much money to pay them. I, just beyond belief, the stuff we are considering and entertaining now with this um, this whole COVID thing. You guys have any thoughts on that? Well, they're creating. They are trying to create a nice little utopia for us. Okay, where they tell us what we should or should not do. We are becoming their servants. So they can tell a private business, well, you know, okay, fine, we didn't close you down during the pandemic. So be grateful. Be grateful we did not close you down. And now this is what we want you to do. This is what we are requiring you to do. You must pay your workers a little extra $4 per hour. Like if it is nothing. In their utopian world, the policy does not have consequences. It does not. I don't know when these people will learn. Every time they increase the cost of doing business for anyone, whether it's a small business or a large business, it costs jobs. It really does. And I wish somebody will teach these people that. But these people are nothing but a bunch of idiots trying to destroy our lives. Oh, Leon, you're, you're so wrong. I mean, don't you know that these companies have bazillions of dollars just sitting in the bank, just doing so, nothing? I mean, no, these, it's, these, it's, these it's in their mattress. It's in, it's in, it's in their mattress. Yeah, no, yeah, they, they have a mattress, swimming pool, exactly. a company swimming pool that they all dive into and just swim through the gold. Yeah, <laughs> their exactly. Coffee. Yeah, it's it's like uh, the the dragon in um, the Lord of the Rings, you know, where he's got all this gold or whatever it was. I can, uh, maybe I got the wrong movie, but anyway, um, the uh, yeah, I got the wrong movie. The Hobbit. Um, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the Hobbit. There you go. And. Um, yeah, and they've got uh, all this uh, money, like uh, Grandpa Duck, Daffy Duck's uh, rich Scrooge grand McDuck. Yeah. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck, <laughs> crying out loud. And uh, yeah, and even though it's a grocery store with razor thin margins, you know they they do two percent, they're doing good. And uh, but no, they got they got tons of money, tons. Yes, uh, Leon, you're so wrong. Um, <laughs> would they miss a few coins out of that swimming pool just disappear <laughs> none whatsoever oh my gosh none whatsoever well speaking of uh just uh knuckleheads who are trying to ruin our lives with their crazy edicts it's time for our knucklehead noise patrol and uh, taking us back to the crazy capital riots, uh, uh, we have uh, AOC, uh, who, uh, you know, it, it, there was uh, kind of a little bit of a mini scandal where she had said that she was in fear of her life and and uh, just gave this whole dramatic, uh, you know, sort of a monologue about how, you know, they were coming to get her. And she was just a hair's breadth away from, from being murdered by the mob. And then it came out to uh, to the news that hey, she wasn't in the Capitol building. <laughs> she, her office is across the street, and the protesters never actually broke in over there. <laughs> so, no, but she but she had this huge drama that she was uh, letting us all know about and how how threatened she was. Well, it, you know, it, it didn't end there. Uh, in the um, I guess in the uh, conversations online. She accused uh, Senator Ted Cruz of trying to murder her, along yes. with some uh, Republican colleagues. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. And so this while saying she's uh, trying to work, you know, with those across the aisle. And let me let me get, read you the quote here real quick. I am happy to work with Republicans on this issue uh, where there's common ground. But you almost had me murdered three weeks ago. So you can sit this one out. Uh, happy to work with almost any other GOP that aren't trying to get me killed. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to help, you can resign. And that's what she told Senator Ted Cruz in a tweet where he was apparently trying to reach across the aisle. <laughs> Uh, guys, have any any thoughts on? I just this is just one of many crazy AOC things, and the media, of course, is nowhere saying uh, where, where's the evidence, and yeah, you know, they, yeah. nobody, nobody. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the 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 stench of hypocrisy is is unbelievable. We had Maxine Waters, who's a Democrat from here in California, telling her supporters, telling them to get in the face of those Trump supporters, let them know they're not welcome here. Blah blah blah. She said all that. We had um, Chuck Schumer, the, who is now the majority leader in the Senate, saying to, to, to Gorsuch and, Cam, uh, and Kavanaugh and uh, the Supreme Court, you have unleashed a whirlwind and you know what's going to happen to you if, if, the, if, um, if, you, if you keep on with these rulings. Yeah, you don't vote nobody the way ever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And nobody, nobody ever said anything about that. Yeah. Now How we about... have AOC fantasizing about being murdered now. Because she's fantasizing about it, obviously. Because... She was not even in the area where the, the, the protesters were. She wasn't even close, close to it. She was not endangered in any way. But now she's fantasizing about being murdered by, by, by Ted Cruz. Well, and, and Boy, to, be fair, these people. Yeah. to be fair, though, her building was evacuated, but the protesters did not, you know, did not enter. Right. Yeah. Did not enter. It was evacuated, yes, but they didn't enter. My God. Um, remember the baseball game a while back that was shot up by somebody? Remember that? Yep. One? Yes, a, the yes, Bernie right. supporter. A Bernie supporter. Yes, a Bernie supporter. What? What? Wait! Wait! What? Wait a minute. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, he really did try to. I don't know. I maybe even kill. I can't remember if anybody died in that one. But no, I don't think anybody died. But no, there might have been. Okay, um, I'm not sure. But Steve Scalise, who is a congressman from Louisiana, yeah, he he's still suffering the fact he was shot in the back. I mean, he's still suffering. Um, a few of other people were shot too. I think. The yes, a few people were shot. Yes, I don't think anybody shot. died though. Uh, yeah. But but Bernie Sanders did not get in trouble for inciting that that guy to go out shooting up uh, Congress people. How could no. he's a left winger, man? Oh. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> you got that God, wrong gotta, again, Tim. I, Come I, on, I, I gotta learn the rules. You gotta <laughs> learn the rules. <laughs> well, speaking of the rules, we're almost out of time here. So uh, let me uh, uh, wrap up our show. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, you know, you can catch us on uh, Facebook, uh, Libertarian Counterpoint on Facebook. And we'll see you at the next one. Thanks so much. This is Gail Morgan with Libertarian Counterpoint Productions. Knuckleheads of Liberty, Monday nights at 530 on Channel 17. Libertarian Counterpoint on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 17. Also, you may catch our shows on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media. Once again, thank you for watching Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.